Hello, John. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing, man? I am fantastic, man. I, I, I've got to say, I was listening to the score, uh, at least what you guys have released, Michael's Legend. Uh, I'm really blown away by what you did here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I, you know, going in, this as a fan, seeing this film and seeing these characters and some of the actors return, it's been, it was very satisfying for me. Uh, what was it like for you as a, kind of creating the sound with these kind of familiar faces and this fresh look? Well, it was uh, it was a joy. I mean, it, it's a, so much fun to score this movie and uh, the, David's movies. It's just so much fun, and uh, I love taking some of the old uh, Halloween themes and refurbishing them into the new era here, in the modern era. And uh, it's uh, it's just great. It's, it must be kind of re relaxing to at least say, okay, I'm not on the set. I'm not constantly like having to make the decisions that David is doing. <laughs> That's, but, you got it. You got it. <laughs> how much of an influence have you had in where the story is going and, and where he's, because he's taking a, a unique and different path, which I really like. I uh, just give my blessing because I think I agree with you. It's so unique. It's so different, but it's it's just brilliant. So I don't have to do anything. I love wow. it. Wow, wow, that, that's a lot of trust because this is a film that you know you you made years ago, seventy eight, that inspired so many people. How has it changed you? How how has your outlook changed on the franchise, especially now, kind of being involved in it once again? It's great, and I I. I resisted for a number of years, but uh, Jason Blum convinced me to do this. And I'm really happy he did. I am too. I am too. Well, look, all the fans of this, you know, obviously you've done some amazing work. Uh, one of my favorite films of yours is Starman. I think it's oh, thank brilliant. You. Uh, wh why do you think now this this film specifically is so brutal and they he pushes the limit which was actually really nice to see what was your reaction like just the level of violence and the, and the bloodshed and the victims for that matter <laughs> i thought this is the ultimate slasher film this is the the movie that i think uh every horror director wants to make he wants to do this we want to kick ass. We don't want to be pansies. <laughs> That's true. Well, I think it does seem to be in this day and age, a lot of times horror is sanitized, cleaned up. We don't want to see anything too shocking, you know. This Somewhat, but you know, go back to the, go back to Hostel. Uh, the thing, the thing about the violence, and in, in oddly enough, in Halloween, uh, kills is it's not cruel. Uh, it's just the intention is not cruel. Michael is a, a force, and he's a force of evil, and we watch what he does. But uh, these, it's it's uh, it's just so well done. I think we can all celebrate it. I think so. Too. Well, I think a lot of fans are really happy to see Halloween three kind of get a little representation. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what you know i was thinking of that the other day where we're we're halloween kills we're looking at halloween ends you know back in the day when you did halloween three we were it was like this could be a new way to tell the story create a, a an anthology of sorts with new films do you think that's a possibility now with this oh, with the end no 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 they um, want to see michael yeah well i guess what i was saying you know with halloween three it was such a um it's it has become a cult classic and that's i you know i it's a shame that that didn't work out in some ways that we didn't see new fresh stories of halloween because it would be nice to see yes but, i agree with you i totally agree with you and i'm see i'm unaware of of the changes in the reputation of halloween 3 because uh, no one tells me anything so uh, i don't know it's great it's a, it's a great treat no, it's true. It's become a, a lot of people, more and more people are falling into the camp because I think it took a lot of chances. And it, it, well, to be honest, you guys take a lot of chances in Halloween Kills as well with the, some of the kills. I, I do want to say with Jamie Lee and your relation, it, I, you guys are both executive producers. 
how does it feel to be back working with her? What ha, has anything ever been lost on that relationship? It just seems so genuine and so perfect. It's it is perfect and it's deepened. If anything, uh, I worked with Jamie back when she was a teenager, and this was her first movie, and now she's uh, just on top of the world. And she's such a fine actress. I'm so proud of her. I'm proud of her evolution as an actress. And every everything with in dealing with Jamie is a joy, just a joy. How did you know? I mean, back then, like she was just a kid, even though she had the famous mom. How did you know she could pull this off and 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 become legendary? Oh, well, you never know that, but but I knew she could pull it off. I read her for the part, and she was just great, perfect for the part. Do you you know with the changes that J her character Lori Strode has made? I think it, it, it weirdly this movie feels incredibly relevant today in this, even though it was done before the pandemic, even though it was, you know, there's a lot of kind of similarities between in this film and what's going on now. Was that, did, did was there, there ever a moment you're kind of like, Oh my God, we're kind of telling the future in a way. No, the whole, the whole thing about the survivors of violence is interesting to me because that resonates. That's right now. The survivors of violence and uh, and how they uh, how they cope, how they last, and uh, I think that's real interesting. I think David did a great job with that. Well, yeah, because you never see in a slasher movie, you never see someone going, "Oh my God, my best friend just died." I'm going to mourn this. I'm going to feel it. This movie, you feel that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's especially with, uh, I think Judy, Judy Greer is one of the, uh, what an amazing performance she gives here. Oh yeah. She's a really terrific actress. With your music and I, you, you know, you, you've been doing a lot focusing on that. What is the joy? Why is that such a special, I mean, obviously you're working with your son. That's got to be amazing. Why is that becomes uh, probably, I guess, maybe the more important thing to you or the more joyful thing to you? Why do you think that has overshadowed maybe going back and directing a film? Directing is like going to work in a coal mine. It's not fun. It's hard. It's hard work. It's stressful. So you have to be driven to it. You have to have in, in, inside of you, you have to have a drive to put up with all the bullshit. Yeah. And uh, I, I've basically reached a point in my life where I said, I don't need this anymore. Man, this is too rough. But then along came this my musical uh, business. And uh, music is just uh, the best of humanity because it doesn't require any words to describe it. You just listen. That's all there is to it. It's just listen. And I think we are at the top of our, of the, of our species in terms of uh, creativity when we create music. So I didn't think that before I do now. How did you, how, how did you know that? How did you learn that your son would be such like the perfect <laughs> combination between you two how did you guys discover that i just uh throughout the years you know we started playing together and uh he learned music and so did uh, my godson daniel who has enormous gift and, and uh, we just make a great team you do, and your live shows are incredible. I've oh, got to say. <laughs> well, we we're almost out of time, but I got to thank you, John. I've been a fan. I, you were the first director I knew. You were the first oh, one I you. looked up to. So it's and I'm and congratulations. I'm so glad you're still involved with this series, and it's nice to see. Thank you, man. Take care. Cheers, man. Hey. What are you guys doing out here? It's Halloween, we've been trick-or-treating. Are you alone? There's a creepy man in a white mask. Where? And he keeps like trying to play hide and seek with us. Where did you see him? Look! I run, go home now! Michael. 
My grandmother set the fire. No one told you. <gasps> told me what? Michael Myers is alive. A man couldn't have survived that fire. Forty years ago, the boogeyman came for us. We are the survivors of Michael Myers. Lori, what do we do? We fight. Mom, our family will kill him. We're gonna hunt him down and we're gonna put an end to this. He, he is not gonna stop killing until we stop him. If you track Michael's victims, that's a straight line to Michael's childhood home. He is coming for me, but I'm coming for him. You want to kill someone? Take me! Michael! I want to take his mask off and see the life leave his eyes.